These are things you should never do when you design your games. I'm joined by James, who has worked on Need for Speed, who's worked on Gears of War Tactics, and he's led teams, and uh, he's been doing this so for 17 years now, and he's gonna be joining me with some of these ideas, so I'm just gonna pitch him a few of my ideas to see what he thinks, and then I'll let him get into the big mistakes you, sh you should never do when designing games. Be pushy about your ideas. What do you think of that one? <laughs> uh, yeah, game designers, especially junior ones they, they really want to fight right they want to <laughs> prove how smart they are uh a lot of the the best designs come from collaboration and mm. you can toss ideas out there but expect them to change and yeah. roll with the punches and find your way to good stuff don't fight your fight fight for your game and work with your team to make the best game Definitely. I, uh, I actually had somebody come in to our group. I don't want to say any names, but design has been the hardest thing. So of all of the different roles we've had here, I, I run a group of 168 uh, volunteers that work together to make games like this one here. Uh, anyway, design has been the one where we've lost people. Like it's really hard. We're really people first. We love people around here, but design's the one where we, we lose people because uh, they get so possessive about you have to add this idea and that idea. And I feel like this is the exact wrong thing when it comes to game design. It's not about an idea. It's about building a team toward a goal. That's what I feel like is at the heart of game design rather than pushing ideas on other people. I feel like that's the, in you're doing the wrong thing. You, you should go be a one man team. I think if you do that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It, it's very easy to get caught up on how brilliant you think you are, yeah. but I always liken game designers to being a lens, a magnifying glass, if you will. It's not about what you can do, it's about what you can focus from the rest of your team and bring all that energy to a point. Interesting, interesting. I like that uh, that analogy there. Okay, so one of the things I've found, and, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, new game designers often come in and they come in with like tons of ideas. I, I want a grappling hook, I want like rocket launchers, I want you know boom 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 and i feel like what makes the game great is not <laughs> makes a budget great it's also not adding every <laughs> single idea in one package but re taking all of the things that you could do and refining it down to the few things that you should do yeah um it's very easy to just get caught up in fun ideas yeah. they're fun ideas uh, understanding the why behind the choices you make is really important. And we've had these discussions in the past mm. from the player's point of view is why does the player want to do this? Yeah. If you as a developer and you as a designer can't understand the why behind the player's decision making, why do they want to do the next step? Why do they want to collect the thing? Like all the extra features in the world won't make your game better, right? You yeah, need to absolutely. find that core of the experience, find what's going to motivate them to take the next steps, find what's going to give them real rewards and payoffs that they want to, they want to get and they want to strive towards. And then you can start to realize, oh, now that we're playing it, now that we're seeing it, we could probably add a thing that makes this even better rather than you, you tried to add 100 features up front, not knowing if any of them were any good or useful. Couldn't agree more. And I love this next one. Uh, this one has been a uh, pain in my life almost is uh, uh, writing long documents. I see this every time when you have a new designer and I was this guy. So, you know, shame on me for a little bit, but uh, you know, I'll just show you, I'll show you. This is one of the documents I had to decipher this morning, but this is how not to do things. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, show you uh, a, a document I made. Okay, so here's, here's backstory on uh, what an early game. Oh gosh, what have I done now? Uh, let me just make myself disappear and I'll get myself out of the way so you can see it. So uh, humans arrive on this planet at this time and we have all the planet details. And this is what a lot of people do. They get really complicated ideas and this is tiny compared to what I had before. This is the trimmed down version, but you know, it, 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 how the planets rotate, weeks, days, months, how the calendar works, uh, the different size of the planets, how the planets will interact, that they're, they're, uh, the distances, how they'll be tidally locked. Okay, please just don't do this when you make a game. Think about like one idea that works and communicate that with people. Now, now I've trimmed this down more, but still, you know, I would just never go about doing things this way. It's fun. It's really cool. And you can get people hyped up about these kind of things. Is it useful at all? In my opinion, no, but I'd love to hear what you think. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I think you kind of captured it there. It's it's fun and exciting. Like you're exploring the, these ideas, you're lost in your ideas, you're, you're fleshing them out. And there is a place for writing this stuff down. It's really just for you though, right? Yeah, uh, and exactly. long documentation can be useful so that you don't have to hold it all in your head. But even then, the chances you're gonna go back and read it all, eh, 
if or he, even understand it. anyone else is going to read it yeah almost zero. <laughs> oh, absolutely uh and so wherever possible bullet lists over paragraphs illustrations over text uh try and make sure that it's short and sweet and it's summed up with this is what we're all about this is a summary this is the, the things we're trying to hit so that as people read it they have a framework by which they could give you constructive feedback if they're going to read it they have to understand what you're trying to achieve if it's this long sprawling tome of the the depth and complexity of your space orbital mechanics that's nice but what does that mean as a player i don't know right so yeah, it's, it's very easy to get lost in that um don't write in my opinion don't write those long gdds you were talking about that earlier do something that's a little bit more visual you inspired us to do it this way and uh, we we have something very visual i don't want to go too much into detail some of this is out of date but basically you can see here you know this is something that a three-year-old can read i'm just keeping it as simple as humanly possible as to what they see here and how they decipher it and bold it you know that but how would you make let's let's put away the game design document the traditional terrible dictionary to read what what do you do today uh, it's going to depend on the size of your team, but okay. the, the top level stuff you want to do is something like what you've got here, which is here is a, a top level vision board. Uh, it can come in as a, a mural board like this or a, a pitch deck in a more PowerPoint presentation, but a high level, this is what the game's about. This is why it's exciting. This is the kind of experiences you're going to have as a player. This is the sort of world you're exploring and it's short and it's sweet and it's punchy. Yeah. Uh, if you can't explain your game quickly to your developers and the rest of your team, how, how can you possibly expect to craft a game that players are going to understand and get engaged with? You have 5, 10, 20, 30 minutes tops before someone's going to bail and get bored. So yeah. you need to have the most succinct version of that game in your head that you can put down on paper for your developers to understand and then ultimately for your, your players to understand too. Definitely. I'm glad I get bored quickly because uh, I have a short attention span because uh, that helps us keep everything in line to say we're not going to have documentation that's nine pages long and I love what the designers are doing now and I really feel like design as a thing is is a little bit like running a social media page is you get little bits and bobs and you try to make it clear what's getting across but not in this big hunky document where you have to destroy the whole thing and do it all over again okay next next question i should get into uh using too many uh, too few pictures and gifs okay i think we pretty much covered that here was the next question uh fill to test right what do you think of that one uh, uh about testing how important is that uh it's surprisingly hard the bigger your team gets just to okay. get the team to play their game uh and it's really important it's as important as it is developing the features okay that is it is so that it, you play the, the stuff you're developing, be you a coder, artist, or designer, so that you see how your work fits into the broader experience because you have to understand how it works. Uh, and then you also have to just see how it feels and realize that, oh, this is clunky, or oh, this is hard to use, or this doesn't make any sense. And get feedback from as many people as you can. Your first idea is never your best idea. Uh, and sometimes you'll probably experience this where you may be writing something uh, and then word or crashes or whatever, and you have to rewrite the whole thing. The second time you wrote it, it's shorter, it's better, it's mm, punchier. Yeah, I find that, that all is the time. iteration process. It, it's yeah. the iteration process through failure. But ultimately, that that is what you need to do: is get your get your game in front of yourself and people, and spot where it's not working, and work on making it better. Absolutely. I found uh, all my ideas, uh, like they say about war, the first casualty of war is the best laid plans. Uh, all my ideas, uh, you know, are great in my mind, but the moment I put them before people, they're, they're radically different. And I would encourage everybody, please, at the earliest possible stage, continually put your game before people who have no interest in saying nice things to you and hear what they have to say, because it will benefit the whole experience so much, you know? Yeah, I think and the important part there is people who have no interest in giving you good feedback, right? Yeah. It's nice to get your family to test, but they all like you probably and they want to say how great you are. Yeah. Uh, I've had this problem a lot when I've been recruiting people to come in and play test. Uh, a lot of them would end up being game dev students and ultimately their ulterior motive is to get a job, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll say nice things to you and, oh, your game's so cool. That's not helpful. No one's getting any useful out of this. Yeah. <laughs> so getting people in there that don't care about your game, because ultimately that's what's going to happen when you put it out to the public is no one cares until you give them something exciting to care about. 
give give us one thing and, and feel free uh, don't feel bad about it what was one great mistake that you saw us doing and i should put some context for the viewers uh, i run p1om uh, we're 168 uh just hobbyist developers doing stuff for fun and james here has helped us a tremendous amount figure out what we need to do and how to make it work and i'd love to hear what, what were some of the biggest things that you saw us doing wrong in the early days if you remember yeah, I think the one that jumps to mind right away is we've talked about the why. Like, yeah. why does the player want to do something in your game? And I think it's very easy as a developer to get caught up in, well, I've had these experiences in other games, so let's make something like that. Like, in this case, you're making a very voxel, uh, Minecrafty sort of experience. And so you're building on the experiences you've had there, assuming that, yeah, this was good in Minecraft, but not necessarily good in your game. So you have to understand, well, why does the player want to get from one place to the next? Why does the player want to upgrade their, their their slimes or why why do they want to do anything yeah. and until you understand that you don't really build mechanics that create compulsion and create engagement you just build functionality and you know you might play it for five or ten minutes and go okay it's a technical demo it's kind of interesting looking but if you don't understand the why you'll never make players go oh i really want to do this or ah i'm stuck i have to take one more turn or i have to figure the thing out they'll just they'll give up they'll go away and how do you when you seek to bake the why into a game how do you do that uh, it, it's it's tricky. Uh, part of it's research and understanding what the expectations in the genre are. Uh, part of it is understanding the, the overall loop that the player is going to go through and spotting where there's there's superfluous steps or there's things missing. And ultimately, it's about creating a sense of need for the player. They they they're driven by I need to in in a survival game you need to eat and drink potentially. In yeah. a Mario game, you need to jump out of the way of the, the the Goombas before they hit you. You need to be able to do certain things to progress. Uh, in, and when you look at back at older games, they actually suffer from this more, some of them, is that they're just there to be played. They don't create a sense of need or desire in the player. If you can create that, uh, either I need to get away from the threat or I need to go towards the thing, yeah. uh, that's the start of, of engagement and compulsion. And then, as we said before, get other people to play it because you're probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to show uh, one of the things that uh, James you recommended the moment uh, we showed you our game is to actually put up a camera and show off where the player should go and like maybe some sort of flashing thing like oh you want to get this special tool or something like that just to give them a sense of hey this is your goal this is your direction this is something to shoot for um, th is that a way you would go about it in most games every game's different uh, the secret to good game design is it's never the same twice. Gotcha. And a, a lot of people coming into game design are like, well, where's the tutorial or where's the template I can fill out? Uh, <laughs> sure, yeah. there could be a template that you might be able to fill out, but ultimately you have to be doing something that's different and new and there won't be uh, a standard way of doing it. You have to figure your way out into it. Absolutely. So it's, it, it's not something where you can just look up like, how do I model the teapot? Sure, that's great, but you need to actually understand do I need to, to create uh, a new way of communicating to the player? Can I rely on something that's a convention in the industry? Uh, and a cinematic is a convention that's, you know, it's pretty good, but it's not, you'll, know, you'll notice that not every game uses them, right? So it's up yeah. to you to make creative choices, technical choices, uh, psychological and gameplay experience choices to bring a whole experience together. And to end this off, I'd love to get your criticism about how we solve this problem. So we started this game and uh, you wisely directed us not to do this. But basically, uh, at the start of this game, it was a hardcore survival game. You pick up one rock, you are now slow. Welcome to being slow. That wasn't fun at all. <laughs> uh, but the ori original idea was needs, right? You're hungry, you're thirsty, you need to satisfy those needs in a Sky Island world, right? Now we changed that fundamentally. And now the why is all about the creature. So the the moment you land, and this isn't fully uh, here yet, but the moment you land on the first island, you have a creature, and that creature pops out of an egg, and uh, you know it's it's damaged, and basically all your life at the beginning is kind of like taking care of a baby. So it's like, okay, I have this creature, it's now hungry, I gotta feed it. It's now sleepy, I've gotta help make it a bed. It's now needs shelter or it needs uh, fire, and so you're having this loop where you're going around dealing with that at the beginning, and it's very forceful. And we, we try to be forceful at the beginning to just get you to get, engage with the gameplay loop a few times. And then we make it about petting the creature and nurturing the creature and loving the creature. And so how we solved our why problem when we got rid of the hardcore survival is we moved that why problem to the creature instead of us. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the improvement is it's evident. There's suddenly a, a self-reinforcing like 
there is a thing signaling to me it what I need to do next. Yeah. Uh, and that signal starts to prompt you of like it, it, it forces the player to ask questions like, oh, well, what do they need? Oh, I think I know what they need now. How do I get that? How do yeah. I do this thing? And then they start applying what you've taught them or they may be learning new tools that you're giving them. And you start kicking into that kind of like learn, practice, master loop that really good games do well. Gotcha. Uh, and so this is your early stage, you're learning stuff. And then you're going to let them loose at some point soon where they're going to start to practice. And the, you, you'll be leveling them up and you'll be feeding their needs and you'll be experimenting with new stuff and mastering that before you introduce the next set of mechanics and the next set of challenges. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to leave it there with the words learn, practice, master. Learn, practice, master. Great three words there. Uh, I'll leave the next video in the middle of the screen. I will also say if you're interested in joining a community where you can learn this stuff in a social environment, go ahead and check out our community there. We have a Discord. We have an official team. We have a lot of people working together on this game. And you're welcome to join us. Uh, game dev is a 10-year journey. You should embrace that journey. It's a lot of fun. And if you want to do the hard things, come join us. Be part of that journey and uh, make some stuff with us. And uh, maybe one day we'll publish and we'll be able to have that on our resumes and say, okay, we've we've accomplished a game together. So come join us and be part of what we're doing. Uh, and uh, yeah, you'll enjoy it.